Our next guest doesn't believe that Bitcoin is a bubble. In fact, he says a cryptocurrency could soar to, get this, $500,000 in three years. The always controversial John McAfee joins us now. John, great to speak with you. Great to speak with you. Thanks for having me on. How do you, how do you get to $500,000 in three years? Well, let's not worry about that. Let's, let's worry about uh, you, people you following bet, you the bubble. You got a bet going online on that. <laughs> yes, I do. Um, people are calling Bitcoin a bubble that's bursting. Now, keep in mind that two months ago, Bitcoin is at $2,900. And people were saying it's never going to hit three. Well, it hit four and it hit five. If you look at the, at the long term trend of Bitcoin, it has been consistently up. I mean, who cares that it dropped a thousand dollars from five thousand after it went from the twenty nine hundred to five thousand in two months? It's still ahead from what it was two months ago. You know, I've, I've, my, my company is one of the largest miners in America, and one of the nice thing about mining is it doesn't matter what the price of Bitcoin is; we still make money. As the as the price goes down, there are fewer competitors for mining, uh, and the the difficulty rate decreases, and we simply mine more coins. So I, I know as, as well as anybody what the price of Bitcoin is, and it is consistently increasing. I understand. Going, oh, wow, we, the bubbles burst. Uh, go ahead. You know, Jamie Dimon was very clear yesterday that he's a big fan of the blockchain technology. And most people actually who, who even, uh, you know, call Bitcoin overvalued or what have you, they are believers as well in the blockchain technology. These are two separate issues. So why is that Bitcoin necessarily has to rise to these heights because you're a believer in blockchain? As you do, as you believe. Well, no, I, I don't think I don't think that the <clears throat> that the Bitcoin rise has anything to do with belief in the blockchain. Okay. It simply has to do with belief in in cryptocurrencies. I mean, once you start using cryptocurrencies, whether it's uh, uh, Bitcoin or Monero or Litecoin, it doesn't really matter. You see the facility, you see the ease of use, you see that without a central bank control, the value of that currency depends upon the users of that currency. And why is Bitcoin growing so fast? Because it's getting more users. More people are believing. If, if I do a transaction with a credit card, I have to put in my name, my address, my credit card number, the code on the back, my billing address. Well, that takes five or ten minutes, for, especially for someone my age. But with Bitcoin, it's 15 seconds. Give me a wallet address. Here's the amount. Done. Once you see the facility of cryptocurrencies, once you see how fast they are transacted, then suddenly fiat currencies, credit cards, central banks maybe, make maybe no it's sense too, whatsoever. Maybe it's too easy, though, John. I mean, how do you I'm sure the government would like to track where this Bitcoin is going. They would love to tax people on this. And so if you use Bitcoin, you may not have that sort of paper trail, so to speak, as to where um, people are making revenues or, or earning money. So are you concerned that government intervention in some way could actually slow this down? Well, it, 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 it can't slow it down, but there will be government intervention. Why? Because as people start using more and more cryptocurrencies, things like Monero, which cannot be tracked at all, when they start using these things, suddenly governments are going to start losing income tax revenues. And they're going to panic and they're going to say, this is against the law. But how do you stop something that cannot be stopped? I mean, this is not something unique to America where you can just shut it down. I mean, I can use the Tor browser or the Onion browser and access uh, uh, Bitcoin wallets all over the world, and no one will ever know. The government does not have enough enforcement personnel right. to ever stop Bitcoin, Monero, Litecoin, sure. and all of the others. So they're going to have to face reality, find some other way to raise revenues. This is a fact. So, John, I got to ask you, because most people know you as a cybersecurity pioneer. They know the firm that uh, is named after you. Uh, in between that time and now, you, you had a very interesting life. And actually, some reports say that, um, you know, it was, it's the insane life of John McAfee that you once lived in Belize, which is true, allegedly got caught up with drugs and other illegal activities. Bitcoin has a bad rap of being used in the underground. That's why people want to use it, because they want to conceal nefarious activity. Um, do you see that potential? Do you, are you concerned about that as, as attracting government regulation? No, not at all. I, I mean, I've, I'm, I'm still a security specialist and I keep track of the dark web. Bitcoin is very seldom used anymore on the dark web. It has been replaced by Monero as the currency of choice because Monero is absolutely anonymous, 
cannot be tracked, either the sender or receiver of any transaction. They're literally invisible. So it's not Bitcoin itself, but cryptocurrencies as a general uh, group of things um, that are being used on the dark web. And, and that will always be the case. Bitcoin used to be the one because that was the only one available, but not anymore. So, so Bitcoin is sort of out of the dark web and into the light. And 99.99% and of its use is legitimate. So, you know, John, I don't know if you know about this, uh, but, you know, Jamie Dimon watches the show pretty frequently. Um, he's probably listening to you right now. I mean, do you have any words uh, for him as to why he, he's got it wrong? I mean, would you want to place that same bet that you made on the yeah, Internet I, I, with I, I Jamie would like, Dimon, I for would instance? Like no, I, I would like to say this, Mr. Diamond. I, I, I respect you, sir, for, for your position. You know, uh, people who rise to your position uh, are not idiots. Uh, however, sir, um, what is you, you called Bitcoin a fraud? I'm a Bitcoin miner. Uh, we create the Bitcoins. It costs over $1,000 per coin to create a Bitcoin. What does it cost to create a U.S. dollar? Which one is the fraud? because it costs whatever the paper costs. But it costs me and other miners over $1,000 per coin. It's called proof of work. We have put massive amounts of, of supercomputer computing power and electricity in creating these coins. Surely there's some value in that work that we did to create the coin. And the fact that Bitcoin is consistently growing in its use and in its, in, in its value has to say something. You know, sure, it will rise and fall, and it is highly volatile, as all new technologies are. Right. And at the same time, it is certainly not a fraud. So you're pretty sure that you're not going to lose this bet that you have on Twitter? No, I, I, I don't ever lose bets. <laughs> Sorry for my bets. All right, then. John McAfee, great right. to speak with you. Thank you. In the United States, copyright law allows for the fair use of copyrighted material under certain limited circumstances without the prior permission from the owner. Under the law, determinations of fair use take into account the purposes of the use, the nature of the copyrighted work, the amount and substantiality of the work used in relation to the work as a whole, and the effect of the use upon the potential market for the copyrighted work. Other jurisdictions may have similar copyright provisions protecting fair use or fair dealing. If you are uncertain as to whether a specific use qualifies as a fair use, you should consult a qualified copyright attorney. You have the right to take it down.